it is so basically okay we are like let me put a record also and thank you very much lena which i was telling you earlier this normally happens the moment the person walks in it goes live and that hello how are you liliana would have happened right there but because we've haven't done that we'll do it now thank you liliana for coming on the show it's always a pleasure speaking to you and i'm looking forward to another wonderful conversation like we normally have thank you so much for inviting me uh to talk to you uh so uh it's a, it's a pleasure talking to you as always thank you very much and now well, i think what i thought was maybe yeah. do you think you want to talk about a little bit about the symposium experience because you did attend a lot of sessions oh yeah about, so yes um okay like my experience as a speaker as a participant what both, what both, both, like? both, okay both. okay so and, and post the symposium and everything entire stretch okay so the symposium was um uh, a really enlightening experience for me like i could uh listen to a lot of uh mediators around the world talk about their experiences their work their ideas um it was good for me to realize that there's a whole world out there that i wasn't aware of and probably um that we share common experiences when it comes to mediation like we encounter the same obstacles or you know uh we that i i don't know if that's a, a good part but i mean that it's good to know that you're not alone facing this situation that is um something that is happening uh globally and that there are a lot of people committed to improve that to make it better to um at least debate and reflect on what can we do to improve that you know because we love mediation we want to take it forward so it's really great to see all these people so committed to enhance the practice of mediation and how to spread it around the world so that was really um and actually enlightening and it, it kind of empowers me to to keep going you know and it was great to learned from all the the speakers that you had on the symposium so that was um very educational i i i would say and for me as a speaker it was <laughs> like um really something because i never have done that before so i was very grateful for the opportunity and to tell a little bit about my short experience as a mediator and the situation here in my uh, city and in my province specifically because other people from argentina had uh, spoken as well about um, about argentina in general uh, but i uh, focus on my city the particular situation here so that was good to have the chance to tell that you know uh, to whoever was listening <laughs> Yeah, lots so. of people were listening lots of people were listening we got a lot of got a lot of feedback after that so lots of people were listening okay yeah that that was that was very nice to be able to share your daily experience you know it's it's nice because you you kind of normalize it it's your life so you don't reflect probably on it so when you have to actually stop and see it you know to tell somebody else it's a good exercise for yourself as well so did you did you watch the recording of your session again yes yes i watched it yes yeah <laughs> amazing look I, when when i watch my shows i watch sometimes watch them and i just enjoy it i just enjoy watching them again it's so it's i okay i shouldn't i'm not very boasting about my shows but it's just that i enjoy watching them myself so it's always yeah, nice I, to that's, that's great because that it, that you show that in 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 your shows it shows your passion and that you enjoy them so it's good that that you like to see them again because it it kind of uh, 
it's um, coherent, you know, of, of what you experience in your shows. So it's, it's good. <laughs> and actually, it brings a smile to me when I'm watching them. It brings a smile to me. There's such nice <laughs> conversations. That it, it's just because, oh, look, at that time, obviously, you're in a conversation. So you're in that conversation. It is going where it's going. And suddenly, you look back. Now you've gone back. And now you looked at it. And it's just wonderful to see that. But interestingly, I was watching I mean, the last session that I recorded was with Shadia from Indonesia. So I was watching her session to, to a few days back. And really, I mean, she's got, of course, she's got her concepts right and interesting and we share a vision on mediation and everything. So I really want to put that out separately. I'll try, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is start putting separate sessions of speakers as okay. posts. The only issue that is happening is that people are not sharing it, which have you heard me complaining everywhere. The people are not sharing each other's sessions also. I mean, come off it. You almost 100 speakers. If each of you share each other's post, just the session, you don't have to what, don't have to write a post to yourself, to share on WhatsApp, on LinkedIn, wherever. Imagine 10,000 shares you would have had. Each person, I'm sure, reaches out to maybe, I don't know, 500,000 people. Imagine the reach you could have had. I'm still going to request right now, if anyone watches this, please, speakers, otherwise, please just let it go out. We have to send this information out there. People have to connect to mediation. The process they already connected to, the word also they can connect to. Why am I giving a pitch like that? <laughs> this is like a sales pitch or something. <laughs> so you want uh, the speakers to share each other's uh, yeah. conversation and, and talks. No, okay. No, I'm saying, okay, I'm, I'm still saying the ones that you find useful. But the problem is that you are not going to be able to watch all 100. Yes. According to me. It's going to be difficult, definitely. But I've seen all of them. So what I can do is I can start highlighting one by one. For me, everyone is important. I mean, everyone's session yes, is important. But, yes. but I'll start putting them out session by session, some little, my little observation on it. And I think then I will request all of you, please, please share. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, will, to... I will do, I promise. Good. That's what we need. That's the enthusiasm we need. <laughs> but otherwise, but, but otherwise, what is the situation in? I mean, but after you, uh, I mean, met new people, did you connect to people? What happened after that? Yes, I. Well, yes, I. I, um, I had some connections with some of the the speakers to exchange ideas, to exchange their work, what they are doing, and probably they, uh, for instance, are asking about the situation in like developing countries. Uh, so. Uh, you know, they, they reach out to ask, um, not, not my opinion, but to, if I could help them provide some information about certain topic that they are, you know, researching and how it's uh, in developing countries. So, yes, I think it's a way to connect and to um, exchange ideas and probably to, yes, of course, meet people that otherwise you wouldn't have met and um, tell them what your views and your thoughts are, what you want and to get their feedback. So um, that is really good because it kind of create this global community that you know that you can ask for help or, um, you know, have some support in, in your projects or whatever you want to take off. Yeah. But you would realize that this is a curated community. These are special people that I'm putting together. <laughs> it's not like anyone. It's like not everyone. It's just curated. But what I really want is that people should take it to the next step when they start collaborating. And collaborating where there is going to be people earning money out of it. They're, we want mediators. I want mediators. I've always been saying that if the stomach is full, mediators have a much larger role to play in society, which Ken, <laughs> Ken obviously talks about, which I've spoken to you about also. So if that role has to happen only when certain basics, because mediators are not mediator mindset people are not greedy people it's just okay we're okay with our basics but that basic has to come so that collaboration i want to see that happening and does it have happen, happen cross-border how that cross-border collaboration can happen because it's a global pool we're on online why should that global pool not be utilized anywhere why should liliana be only a person in argentina and on santa fe she could be doing something in croatia maybe who knows so that is that. That is now that link that I have to start creating on that, which I thought people would must maybe they were already doing it, not doing it. Was obviously what people are doing within each other. I would not know, but I think that should be the thing. Do you see that happening? 
Um, I think that's a great idea. I think that should happen. Probably, I think that, um, I, I don't know, uh, I, I'm talking about my point of view and my experience. Probably there are people that are collaborating with each other and or in a more institutionalized way, probably they build a group or something. Um, but I, I think that um, probably there are like um, individual collaborations because you know uh, you take time probably from your job or you know to do the research that you want. So it's um, you do it on the side or something that's the way I see it so probably the idea that you have it's good and it should be promoted so you can have like a framework or something that gives you the necessary time and tools to to actually pursue that research that collaboration yep. I don't know if it makes sense what I'm saying yeah, yeah. probably no, makes absolutely. sense in my mind I don't know if I'm saying it correctly no no you always, make sense. That... you always make sense I'm saying that you always make sense <laughs> Okay, thank you. But I think that that we need like uh, more support. So yes, of course, that that contribution that you're seeking to needs to to be supported, you know, because otherwise, probably it could get in the middle, you know. Um, but yeah, I think I think that is something that probably is happening. Um, as I told you, um, I am I there's a mediator that has reached out to me to ask me about developing countries in a certain topic that he's working on. So of course I will contribute and help him. But again, you know, you have a limited time because you have other activities and stuff. As you pointed out, you know, you have to like uh, uh, put food <laughs> so on your table. So um it's hard to manage that you want to do a lot you want to contribute you want to research you want to uh, you know pursue mediation um but you have to balance it so i think it's you know you should create like a support network or something and and have it not i don't know if the word is institutionalized but you know what i mean like Okay. Really, the thing was that this aspect normally does happen. Normally, everything then starts getting institutionalized. Then yeah. I also start thinking, let me create an institution, and then that work is happening under institution. I'm I'm making a conscious conscious decision. I made a conscious decision not to do that because that is happening already. Yes, I know. And, That's and why I, I didn't. I wasn't sure about saying <laughs> that word because I know. I know you, you don't like it. No, I tell you why. I tell you why. You know, no, but no, I'm giving you the reason. I said, look, I've looked at it. I've looked at the entire thing. Now, thing is that all that has been happening is happening. Me sitting on one table in one corner of the world, if I can connect so many people with the limited resources that I have, I can, what, what do I have? My time to give. That's all I'm doing. If I can do that, I'm saying institutions should have done a million times more. Because the kind of funds that they have access to, the whole infrastructure that they have, everything, they have reputation in the market for years. So I'm saying that fundamentally, there might be an issue when you create an institution, which if you, if Bernie Meyer is, Mayer is coming on that evolution of a mediator next Saturday, very interesting things that he would have to say, because obviously we'll take him through that later, because that is part of his life. He had developed a collective. And there, this whole balance of the individual and the group, how that dynamic works, we, we, oh, we discuss that. Yeah. Yeah. So that is why I sometimes feel that a lot of discounting on work happens when that structure is created. So I wanted individuals collaborating, working together as individuals, but there is some, some common goals. There is a cause that you're working for. Getting remunerated, yes, you should be remunerated, but you should always have that independent thought. Why should that be discounted? Because what happens is like in our in our country, sometimes what happens because we have a multi-party system. So you have a patch up of government. So, okay, this party comes because finally it's all about seats, how many seats you have. So they bring it together. And what do they say? What will they work under? The minimum common program. I mean, you were elected to do the maximum and you will say we will do the minimum. So this is where a group issue happens. So I'm saying that, look, everyone works as individuals, but I, for me, I cannot ask, like I've been saying always, I'm not going to monetize what I do. I'm saying I'm going to do what I do. And if you think I've added value in your life or whatever, you give me, send me whatever you want to. Same model for you. 
same model for all of us that was that was the whole idea behind it and everyone follows the same model we keep doing our things because the kind of people we are we are not commercial we we don't we won't start looking at everything from that monetizing oh this guy wants this work to be done okay how much can i charge we can't do that i mean if the people with the media and mindset mindset will you know can't do that i'm telling you we just don't have it in us so this is was a kind of a i've been trying to create this model it's i, I mean there are some people who do send something once in a while kind of thing but it's not a, it's not something that's really happened so i'm just understanding if that's not the route to take how do we still get mediators to get what they want and still not make them into commercial entities i don't want them to be commercial entities okay yeah probably it's a challenge i i'm not sure how to do that if i had the answer <laughs> i uh i will tell you or will have done it already what you asked me if i i see that happening about the contribution the collaboration and i think yes because you know you reach out to people people reach out to you mediators i mean yeah. um to exchange ideas to ask uh, how this is handling in your country in your city you know i'm interested in this in my city i see that this is uh something to be improved um how are you um how yeah what are your thoughts uh in terms of your experience or in your city can you provide some information about it so that collaboration i see it happen I, I, so that's why i told you that individuals are collaborating with each other i the thing is you um because of course it's it's a collaboration you know because you want to help and, and it's between peers um you sometimes don't have the time to do it you know you would like to do it like uh with more dedication probably i don't know how to say it um and that's what where the the support or the necessary support or the basic needs covered you know comes in that's uh, that's what i'm i'm thinking but, uh, of course i i could be wrong and um the institutional i think i don't know if i see it like you have to have like an institution and made it like that but what i mean is that you need the time or the resources sometimes it is you know you need it but mm -hmm. those individuals you can create like a group or something it should not be like you have to have like an institution you know but um certain commitment to to take it forward yeah no because the thing is i don't want a, an individual to be get, to be lost in that institution aspect of it because each yeah. in, each mm -hmm. individual like we said that individual has that individuality that should not ever get diluted and i feel that once it comes into a structure a lot of other factors start coming in and then for that reason yeah. and the individual in this case look as a mediator that individual is what who's important that's it that mm -hmm. is the the person everything is around that person if the people could do it themselves they would do it themselves why would they need a person like that has a special i think this is i think we do not been sold properly maybe that a, in that a mediator is a special person has a special role you value that them your, that is your brand yeah, <laughs> exactly. special person yeah exactly so why should that not be understood why are why are they not valued i think that liliana you have to give me your concept then i'll tell you mine of course which i will why are our mediators not being valued that's yeah. your your question yeah. Yeah. yeah wow um that's an interesting question i i think um well partly if you just say it probably that we are not promoted that that if i understood you correctly you just said that we are not promoted accurately we actually do not share uh, uh with each other as much you know you said it before you're asking people to share each other's lectures and uh conversations um well there's the the aspect of um yeah advertising it, it's one as we we're saying and i think also mediators are fighting uh against a legal system that is already established and very rooted you know that's i'm not saying something that nobody knows you know i'm not 
uh, discovering anything new. I'm, I'm just pointing out some something that during the symposium, I, I heard that from many uh, other speakers around the world. So that shocked me, you know? <laughs> I thought that already only happened here in Argentina, but no, it's something worthwhile. So um, you are trying to establish something. You're trying to be like avant-garde, you know, like change, you know, like break a paradigm, you know? So that's hard. You, you, it takes time, patience, um, you have to be persistent. Um, so I think that we have a lot of work to do and this legal system is so rooted in society that it takes time to change people's habits, you know, because it is a habit also or a custom. How do you handle your conflicts with each other. It's something that it kind of pass on from generation to generation. And you have the legal system that besides all the flaws that you can point out, it has legitimacy. That's that's okay, the word. Um, yeah, so, you know, people see it as the way to go. You know, that's the ultimate word. <laughs> authority to tell me and to resolve my conflict to tell me what to do to state a winner and a loser you know so and that is something that it's already in societies and trying to change that trying to change people to um, solve their conflicts in another way it will take time but it doesn't mean that you have you know it's every day so <laughs> every day work towards that and um yes i think promotion is is one thing you know we have to stay start like talking to people like um you know <laughs> maybe you're among friends and you have to start telling them about this other way of solving conflict it's not just because probably you talk to your peers as well and you don't talk to the, the people, exactly, you know, exactly, exactly, yeah. the ones that actually need it, <laughs> the ones that actually are important and you want to reach out. That's something probably in, in my personal uh, experience, I, I will have to, to reflect on, you know, do I talk to my friends, to my family, to random people that I just encounter? Do I talk to them about mediation, about this other uh, way of, um, because, you know, I'm an attorney as my, my, my profession and people tell me their, their conflicts, you know, I'm on, on a meeting, <laughs> you know, with friends, I'm on a party or whatever. And people usually tell you something, Oh, you know, I, I had this issue and I did, you know, they ask you for, they want to share with you <laughs> what happened to them. If they had an experience with a legal system, with an attorney, you know, they tell you, so that is an opportunity to, to, to tell them, to inform them, because probably they don't know, you know, that that's something that I, that I observed, that they don't know about mediation, they never heard, or if they heard, they are not sure about what it is, or how is the role of mediator actually, you know, works, and probably you think that it's something common and normal, and the people exactly. know it, you know, exactly. Exactly. because it's been around for quite some years here in my in my that college. was idea the symposium that was it's been here for <laughs> centuries know. okay it's not the years i know and yeah but here i mean like mediation you know that name that's the yeah. it's been yeah. around now for several years and and you think uh you naturalize it you know because for you it's like your job you know a mediation you do it so and you lose uh, conscious about that people may not know about it <laughs> or that they need to um, to to um, be informed from a mediator what it is you know and that they can actually reach out to a mediator and um, yes probably I think um, but I think that there is you know that's what was really good for the symposium for me that I found this whole world out there so there are a lot of people that, that are working in medi mediation and for several years, you know, a lot, and that they are experiencing all this that we 
uh, are saying. And so I think that a lot of people and they're committed and okay, it's, you know, work it's been done and there's a lot of that everyone wants to do. So from that base, I think it's a great perspective, you know, from here on. Yeah. I think it's just a matter of basics that like I, I also was pointing out during each session, there's certain basics which are common, which are issues common issues around the world uh, yeah and those common issues i think we have to also think of resolving them in a common way come together mm -hmm. see how it works in one place it doesn't work in the other but i think we need to start working together on these issues because i think mediators in general work with there's one lot which is only into training people and they're that's their that's the only role they play in the mediation world so that's one part of it i'm not saying right or wrong i'm not everyone has their role to play but some people are required out there to start looking at the issues involved in the countries itself and be vocal about them because finally it's for in the long run that is good for everyone. So I think that like with the court system, which I was, I have an issue with the whole court system and the mediation in the court <laughs> system. People are not that vocal about it. I don't hear people ever saying that, no, no, why are they into mediation? Why are they doing it? We should, they should get out of it. We should be, the mediation should be a totally standalone thing. I don't really hear people saying that. And I'm telling you that is a fundamental problem in mediation not being valued. And mediators not being valued. I see that. And how can you actually, how would you tell people to value these people otherwise? While in the court system, you want to give them whatever little bit you do. But outside, you should value them and give them whatever market value. As what? How do you first of all put a market value on someone who's providing such special services? Is actually helping you resolve your dispute. I mean, come off, it's a huge thing that the person is doing. But you don't know how to value such a person. You value people who can take you through a litigation for 20 years for some reason. I mean, there's a there's a fundamental problem in the people's understanding for, on how they value people. In general, let's not look at mediation. Let's look at life. <laughs> Probably, you know, um, you just said that um, so this person is solving your conflict. You should, um, you know, value that. Probably there's an aspect there to to uh, go deep into, I, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not saying that I have, but, um, do people value uh, solving conflicts, you know, in that way, because they are so used to solving it in another way that, um, or, you know, conflict, at least I'm, I'm speaking from my society, you know, conflict has established like a way of living, you know, uh, daily complaints and, you know, you have to struggle with everything. You have to do this certain uh, errand and you know that you're going to get a conflict with someone, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that is so rooted and so established, like something so norm normalized, like it's natural for people that probably that's an aspect to also break, you know, that it's not normal to live in conflict and that is actually something um good to solve your conflicts um by your own way you know because you're the one to empower people to do that so that's something else that doesn't make probably mediators that value in society and it makes you know the, the whole court system and the lawyers and the judges so estimated um, but Lillian, I'd always like I've also been saying again in the symposium, it all comes from that whole colonization and the mindset of the world that was changed because of that, where a few had to rule the world. And those few, the only way they could do it if they controlled the system. People should not get together to solve things. They should not get together at all. The divide and rule policy that the colonizers had. It's a, yeah. it's a power issue, you know. Yeah. Power. But, but yeah, that's yeah. the way, look, I'm still I, 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 with the books that the talking books that first episode with Ken, I was trying to put that across to him also because he was talking about democracy and issues, politics and everything, democracy. I was trying to tell him that we don't have a democracy. A minority rules a country, only about 33% people have voted of the entire votes of the entire votes of the US have voted for the current president of theirs. So that means, look at the amount, 67 on the other side. 67%, you have to rule. 33, you have to rule those. 
you divisions in society will have to be created for that otherwise you will not be you won't survive same thing with india i mean we have about 25% of the votes of the entire country other people the, the party that won the election and on their own they have of course they have other parties coming together but i'm just saying the minor it's a minority majority situation and in the colonizers colonizer situation obviously it was the minority was much much smaller much much smaller the few people running the whole country but the concept remains the same that once you have to take the majority with you your whole way of going about things will be different and if you have to take only a minority with you you will divide society to create that minority if i have to get 33% of the votes of a country to run that country so i will create those things okay how do i it's like arithmetic okay so this group will give me 5% that will give me 7 let's put it all together 33 done i'm done no you have to be looking actually at an absolute majority it should be actually certain issues in a country should be decided at 75% of the population not just 51% in boards in in don't we do it in companies that these decisions will be taken by simple majority this will be done by absolute majority but do we leave this such large decisions in this in our in a country which will influence things in the world also to 33% of the people i mean it's i just find it <laughs> really so the way we structured the entire thing has to be relooked which of course that conversation did not have kind of course did not have it was just a one hour session so i didn't get into so much into that but i'm just saying the point comes from there for me that we have to start relooking the most basic concept that we are used to basic concept in in dispute resolution this basic concept that courts are the only place where dispute resolution happens get this out of your head it's not it doesn't have to happen right, there yeah. that's your last yeah, resort should that be a resort at all i mean imagine if we, should that be a resort at all yeah you were saying something no no that that is what what i uh, uh we were uh, saying yes that uh, that's something to break and it's going to take time you know it's you're you're trying to break um not not you you big room you know the mediators around the world that they are trying to make their way into this rooted court uh, system you know in trying to break that mindset in, in people you know and build a new one uh it's going to take time and it's going to take you know actions um but um uh you know you have to have like um consistent actions not just you know promote mediation once and then that's it you know it's like it's like a school <laughs> you know it's an education thing you know you have to do it i don't know your society as your role of mediator probably for me it's just not in your mediation meetings it's like on your daily life no i try what i've done is i try to break it up into two one is what i call the mediators collective the other i've set up what i call the peacemaker peacemakers collective the idea is look the mediator obviously has a certain role to play being the person who's going to assist the parties but we need other people who have to go out and of course talk about mediation yes. i'm just saying collaborative dispute resolution let's we have to widen that a little bit because of certain aspects of dispute resolution which we think is not mediation because of certain society in the society because look you have to look look at this is a much larger picture we have to look at which obviously came out from certain sessions there also that within within communities all over the world for years collaborative dispute resolution does happen but at some point someone tells them what to do but that person following the, that is because of social pressure social pressure is a, is a is something like i've been been saying is that such a bad thing you have to live in communities you have to live in society so are you be saying that we don't want any social pressure someone telling us what to do and we doing it because of social press pressure is it that wrong to so, or and it's not mediation so we should not even talk about this dispute resolution resolution system this is what is been kind of being talked about when we just to this whole very pure mediation in the sense of the parties should not be told at all what to do of course in theory perfectly all right but people are part of communities i mean they're part of they live together if they say they do it because someone else would want them to do it and because they trust that person's wisdom could be age or whatever i don't see too much anything wrong with that i think we need to relook at this aspect that's one if we have to really 
connect people to the process because if we keep telling them that no if someone tells you what to do it is not mediation you should not do it i mean are you going to tell them that that this dispute resolution system doesn't work you should not do it otherwise what is the option go to courts i mean i think we have to be able to tell them look that you i mean first of all at all are people still getting together as communities you saying something oh, no i mean um you you want it to be sustainable in time so of course in that you need uh people's involvement that's for sure you, you need to to make them see that mediation is important that mediation is useful and you know um and not only like in their personal interest of course in resolving the conflict but in the larger picture it helps building community bonds it yeah. bonds you know it it makes good yeah. neighborhoods um na- yeah neighbors and you know it's building citizenship it's it's part of citizens participation involvement in community you know that all that citizen participation it's only um limited to for instance uh choosing what improvement to do in the city i mean in terms of road or the squares or things like that but they never um it's never about how you can make people actually more involved in decision making you know it just um um it's they give uh citizens uh like pieces of uh decision making things you know <laughs> it's not and they don't actually involve the people they just tell you okay you can choose about between this um things that we want to do i mean the city council in this case you know it it's it's good but there's something that that is left there you know i'm not saying that it's a bad thing what they do because it's good that that they they ask the community so we want to do this three um you know works around the city so choose you know choose what they what you want us to to do but they don't make people involved in the process actually just it it remains the the voting thing but they do not listen it's not like a a, a previous work but in terms of mediation i see that there is a lack of um considering the individual in on the in all the processes you know that in all the the, the decision making processes they it's it's precisely a process like something objective you know we're going to do this this and that and where is the individual there and yeah. and what and what happens if an individual experiences a conflict how we are going to address that that is never on the table that is never considered in all the processes i i'm i'm referring mostly to the public administration um because of my experience and i i see that you know i saw that that um they never consider how to address a possible conflict that that could arise and it's sometimes it's you know it's funny it makes you wonder because they know that conflicts will arise you know <laughs> that is like you know that that will happen the conflict will arise you know someone will will object will not be comfortable with that um that uh, measure that you're proposing that uh, processes that you're implementing something will come up how would you address that what would you do you they are they, it seems that they will wait till that conflict arises and then they will see how it's going to be resolved that is something that yes should be improved of course i really like that this is uh, this... it from the beginning you know Yep. So how are you going what tools are you go, give, will give to the citizens to to actually solve uh things the state should um to remain like um not doing anything uh and once again it's not like the institution thing that you disagree with but I'm saying you have to give people uh the tools and empower and 
And if you don't do that, you know, within the, the institution processes, I'm not saying, you know, that you should institutionalize. I'm saying that if the institutions doesn't have within their, uh, their work, uh, certain processes to make people um, be able to solve their conflicts. So that's another, uh, you know, obstacle in this whole process of mindset of changing, you know, the mindset of people, because if they experience a conflict, you will send them to the court, you know, yeah. you know? I think that's this is what I like about what you're thought on the fact that the individual is getting lost in the entire process and that individual has really there's, there's no dialogue with the individual there's no conversation with the individual it's just one procedure you are one file number in the whole system <laughs> and that's the way it functions and the fact that people do not know that you actually work in the city council you I would put it here that taken one year off only to pursue your dream and this passion for mediation and we have to make sure that that you're not going back <laughs> that has to we have to make sure on that or in another way or by helping in another way but you know I was uh, reading this week about you know common good and the uh, how it um, it kind of changed it to general interest but in the speeches of uh, politicians, you know. But besides that, but I'm not going to go into that because I, 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 it's not that I don't care, but, you know, it's not the place here and I don't want to go into that. Um, but what I found the, the, the problem is there, you know. We are saying um, the common good, we are saying it, let, let's say common good, you know, or general interest of society, you know, it like in opposite of the particular interest of certain individual. So where is it? You know, it's just in the process. It's just, it, it limited to, okay, I come up with this process that will help the citizens have like more quick process for something. It just, it limits to that, that is the common good or how are you making it happen? Because, you know, if you take out the individual, you say, okay, but objective, I have this. Um, we have created an app and people can upload their things. So they have everything like more easier and quick and whatever. Um, okay, great. But if they experience these problems, where, <laughs> where is the, the common good or you know, I see like a, like a, like a crush there, like something that is not being considered. And that is what I'm saying. They are not addressing issues like that, like saying, okay, the individual can experience problems, can experience conflicts, or can reach out to the city council to say, I'm having this issue with my, na my neighbor and I would like, you know, uh, and space here that uh, you can intervene and, and you know help uh, solve this because it's a neighborhood issue it's something that uh, that is very often you know in city councils but I mean you know if you limit it to the processes it's the same thing people come and say this is not okay I can't do this for this reason sometimes of course they are right sometimes you know they are wrong that that, that, that is, i'm not saying that people when they make a complaint they are always right i'm not saying that but either way having a place where they can be heard and explain you know how things you know work what they should do what they um should do in terms of the processes i mean or you know how to address the the Probably it's not a complaint, but the worry that they have, the concern, probably they are just concerned, you know, about something and they have to go through a whole administrative process just to get an answer that they will get it like <laughs> late and probably it's not going to say what they are actually concerned about. So, you know, I see like that um, contradiction between the common good and the individual inside the, the administrative processes. Yeah. Lena, I'll, I'll, again, I'll go back to the same thing, which I will always, a lot of these factors come from the whole 
colonization mindset mm-hmm. that the procedures have been laid down in such a manner yeah. and they have been picked up from there where the administration is there and the people are here and they are just looking at the administration to do things for them while yeah. democracy came in of course and like i'm saying maybe some places democracy did not come in we've called it a democracy but it's not democracy but the fact is that this whole system came in but the processes were picked up from what was that legacy colonial legacy because it worked finally what do people want they want power and control and procedures to follow that and the colony was the best example but that is what they were doing they were that power was there and they were able to wield that power in a manner where they could control people and the politicians picked that up they loved it they can control people through processes so they've kept those processes now how do you break that mindset once you are okay. controlling things yeah now because administrative law you know has changed has changed uh, there is more modern concepts now but um in reality you know um it kind of all got into the concepts you know there is still something to do in terms of practice you know that modern concepts of i mean you know administration public administration is all about the prerogatives that was like the classic um concept about the state you know the public prerogatives and you know individuals have certain um guarantees you know um so there there has been a change in that you know for example in terminology you don't call and and ministers you know anymore you call it citizens you know there is a change in the mindset but there's still a lot to do and um there has been a lot of um you know breakthroughs in improvements in administrative law But then in reality, the, the offices still have that classic <laughs> way to solve things, you know, that is, okay, the state, it says this, and the state, like, you know, this, yeah. like ghost entity, <laughs> because what is the state? You know, it's the, the people that work there, you know, of course, uh, it represents that, but uh, it's like this um, shadow that protects you, you know, we said the state says, um it's uh i'm saying it like in a funny word because i work there so it's like it's common for me so it's different so i'm like i'm mocking anyone please it just it, it was like something normal and um so what i'm saying is that there is a lot that has been um reflect on you know the the intervention of the public administrations and how to make it better and how to make the individual about the individual not about the state anymore you know about the individual about the citizen um there has been a lot of breakthroughs but there's still a lot to go and i am seeing it from the mediation perspective you know not the, all the other aspects i'm saying that from the mediation perspective or if you want to like you know dialogue based conflict solving you know put it the name you want it you say it like it's not only mediation you can call it what you want it that has been there you know for centuries okay that is something that um is still not being considered probably because probably what you're saying it's because this the state has this mindset okay we'll solve it you know and people are uh agree with that you understand or if they don't agree they go to court but um yeah they come to us for a for a solution and we do it you know and and that's it um it's not like they involve the the individual in the conflict and probably they will not do it i don't know but uh there's there's also not ways to to promote that you know so, so what you have to look at, what you have to look at some real real radical change in thought of how yeah. uh, the whole thing works why not why not use technology a lot more we have so much technology at our hands is that really being well, utilized you know that no well from since the the pandemic that was you know there was a whole mother or i don't know if that's the word in english but updating you know the the, the systems 
but not only in the public sector, you know, the private sector experienced the same thing. They weren't, pre they were not prepared for what happened, you know, to work from home, to have all the necessary resources, you know, uh, access to technology was a huge thing through the pandemic here in Argentina, you know, and that the pandemic kind of accelerated all that, you know, all those processes that they were saying, you know, that they were doing about updating and mod modernizing, you know, if, if all the, the processes and stuff that they, they, yeah, they had to do it. Uh, but of course, uh, they, they cannot do it all at once, you know, so they, they choose certain aspects, the ones that people needed more, you know, to do certain online uh, errands. Uh, so yes, they they are using it. They are using no, no, it. No, look, I'm, look, I'm going to the extent of saying one. First of all, public authorities are supposed to be transparent. You can put a camera into every office of the government or of any every official, and it can all be live streamed. You have the technology yeah, at no cost. Yeah, you have a problem with uh, probably that you, you will have a problem with privacy. You know that you it should you not be transparent, but um, Why no, should no, I'm they thinking be? out loud. That no, the opaqueness, opaqueness is kept for people's vested interests. Why should they be opaque? It's a, it's a what is that? You're running a, you're, it's a city council. You, the decisions are taken for the okay, well. You mean the public officers, not public. the employees, because okay, employees but, could, okay, ar no. could argue, you know, about <laughs> private <laughs> intimacy. Kind no, of okay. Yeah. Any, I'm saying okay. Let's look at it at any point of where point of time where the citizen is being dealt with. At that point, should all be live streamed. And I can tell issue. you that, sorry, that employees are really not motivated and really um, angry because the conditions, labor working conditions are not that good. If you put a That's camera. <laughs> no, no, not on them. We're not putting it on them. And first of all, we are not letting you go back. I will there, be the sure. worst. <laughs> yeah. And you are not going back there. Okay. But no, I'm just, no, no, but I'm saying, look. That, that's something interesting as well, you know, yeah. how, how employees felt. So because that will... Um, that is an area to improve that that will help the that will end up helping the whole um, solving conflicts for citizens as well you but, know? but you have to do that yeah. employees that are reluctant to hear from people because they are just tired of being insulted and accused of not working or to be inefficient and whatever that in terms it doesn't help solving conflicts for people yeah but you I don't, there's a relationship there. So you're okay, going to make changes. Like, no, no, but those yeah. changes, you're going to make changes, but you're going to make them from the outside. So you will okay. <laughs> talk, okay, talk so about I'm sorry because I, I interrupted you. You were saying something about the... Yeah, so I'm saying the, every, every the point... Every point of time, place, every place, every official who deals with the, the public, with the people... All that can be live streamed. I mean, you know, it's so simple to do that. Every technology is available to us. What is the cost? Just a camera and broadband connectivity. That's the maximum. So at least all that is out there. People know what's really happening. What's okay now? How do we get them involved in the process? I'm saying we have technology available to us. We have mobile phones. We can vote through mobile mobile phones. Everything is live streamed. You can vote if there is something comes up. Okay, whether this has to happen, it can be localized. Okay, in this part of Rafaela, this decision has to be taken. People, these people will be a affected can you just put your vote right there the vote can come in we needed officials because this communication wasn't available at one point of time in our world so you needed someone to be sitting there collecting information from people today it's instant why are we not using all that looking at that as an aspect of public administration we are really not move i don't see that as something which is those people who run it be being good for them because why are they required it is just, and it can all become system-based. I don't think they're going to see that. I don't think they're going to see that. are not going to see it because it's, look, every, all these can be system-based. What is it? Are you, okay, you're planning a certain road, maybe. I don't know. Let's just, give, whatever, give me an example of what kind of work they do. But I'm saying, supposing a road has to be made or a park has to be made. Now, this park has to come up on this place. So, what, how difficult is it? Okay, this park is coming up. It goes out. That community is on that particular group or they have an app. It goes out to the community. This is being planned. The whole image of that, the whole plan is available to them to access right there. The issues that they have, they raise them right there, and they send out their. If there's a okay, vote to be, the, the app, the app idea uh, that 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 has happened with certain uh, things. That that's something that I think uh, most administrations are using. You know, apps 
So to what extent? Go. What all are they doing in that, in the app? Uh, for example, um, they they are the you know till I I left, they made an app for all the processes regarding uh, private um, ventures, entrepreneurs, you know, people that want to establish a business here in the city. They have to do a lot of paperwork. You know, and they have to go through many offices complying uh, every requirement. So that took a lot of time because every office is overload and, you know, one file for the people is one file, but for the, from the inside, it's like a lot, you know, they have a lot in the same situation. So probably an office held that file for months, you know, so that kind of delayed the whole process. So now all of that is online through an app. I am not sure if it's, you know, it has been implemented, but that was an idea, you know, to make that process faster because since the pandemic, um, you know, because of the labor situation, there were a lot of um, entrepreneurs, you know, people started to put their own businesses because they needed to work. Uh, because we had a lockdown for the last eight, eight uh, to nine months, it was a lot, and people could not work. So they started to to make their own, you know, businesses. So we had like a lot of um, um, requests for establishing businesses, and that was really, you know, a slow process, and we needed to. Uh, make it more efficient. So one of the ideas was to uh, make an app, you know. But apps, I think it's something that they are using a lot, not only here, but at the national level, provincial level, because it's something that it can be done pretty quickly. So that's something that is that is being... No, but, but I, no, I'm saying that to the extent that if we can reach a point when decision-making can happen through that app, can we reach that stage? Then, then I would think we're getting somewhere where the the empowerment of the Probably. citizen. Yeah, that, that could be that could well, you know, when they do that, that that was something, but it's just it was limited to teenagers because we had a, a contest of innovative ideas, um, and it was from for people between sixteen and twenty one years old. So, um, you know, they, you can present your project and then the ones that were selected, you can vote for your favorite uh, online. Yeah, for example, you know, that decision making thing. It was like for contests and stuff, not for like, you know, public policy <laughs> and stuff. But OK, yes, I understand what you're saying. Well, I think I think that that is the actual empowerment where we can actually see the technology being used in a manner where it, it actually, if in, I mean, benefits the person right there. I mean, right there immediately. You don't you don't have to take a long time yeah. for those things. And there are so many decisions that need to be taken, smaller ones, bigger ones, all the time. And why should that be a yes, process of which is? Yes. Has, yes. And this is where the because the people's involvement will be there. At least they cannot say that okay, it wasn't taken with them into taken into account or whatever. So they're right there; they're part of the process. I think somewhere we need to, of course. Yes, the, yes, you have to 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 make them involved in a way um, that um, that as well doesn't. Um, I don't know how to say it, but hurt the process as well. You know, because you have to reach, uh, you have to be fair. This I'm I'm speaking from the public, you know, perspective, mm, of course, exactly. yeah. but I'm saying um, you have to be fair. So you have to establish minimum, you know, requirements and stuff that everyone has to comply with. Um, like, like what? Give me an example. Well, there are certain documentation, for instance, that you have to, you know, accredit, you know, they, so I, I don't want to get to <laughs> Okay, 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 forget about <laughs> and I think that's good. And that will not will not give any contribution to this conversation, I think. Uh, I mean that you have to be fair as well and uh, um, make people involved. I, I, what, what my um, concern is, 
it's not, you know, I, I, I said it, the processes are okay. You have to establish that is the way of working. You know, you, you are an institution, you have to have certain grounds to work. But what I'm saying is, where is the individual in terms of conflict solving? You know, yeah, yeah. what happens? How do you address that conflict? That is what it, and, and how, and what is not being, being considered in relation to the common good that you're seeking in all the other uh, areas that the city well, council well, I'm really should why I'm understand. Well, why I'm interested in looking at Rafaela is because you do understand the population of Rafaela is what, 100,000 people? Yeah. <laughs> and here we talk about our city with 25 million people. <laughs> so now if that experiment works there in a small, because that's the only place you can try it on a, on a 25 million population to even try out these experiments, obviously it's a very difficult thing, but it can be tried. So th th these are the places which should take it up on themselves that we are going to totally re-look the way public administration is done. And if that works yeah. there, that can be taken to other places where no one is going to experiment otherwise. So I'm saying that that is where your role comes I, in. I will, I will get back to you with the, with the because you look like I, I've been <laughs> saying you, you, you have a global role to play. So this is your way of <laughs> getting some, it's like an experiment place. It's like a little lab of yours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's do the experiment. It's really interesting. So something good should come up, of course, always, you know, at least, at least some conclusions, some, you, you can, you can see that the, the uh, the way um, society, this society thinks and address their issues and what they think about the public administration and, you know, and well, the way, the role that public administration should have in the society. And then, um, for me, what is interesting is the role of mediators, you know, within yeah. this linked to the public administration. That because is. how I, how I was looking at it was that supposing you have a basic decision to be taken or more anything and you have a vote that goes out and so you get a vote back saying that there are so many people who do not want it okay and it's only so many want it so now the people who don't want it that is where the mediator and the communication starts that mm -hmm. where are the issues involved because if everyone likes it why do you have to have communication everyone wants it they do it if everyone doesn't want it, don't do it. <laughs> but there is a group in between where you yes. feel, okay, okay you've and got that, about 30, 40% are saying this, 30 are saying this, some are saying yes. maybe. So how do we, that communication that then really starts. really helpful. And in terms of transparency that you were saying yeah. before, that is that will be really helpful, you know, because sometimes what happened is that the city council proposed something um, they meet with people, they, they do some, some sort of a space where they collect people's thoughts on it, but there's no, there, no, um, uh, there, there is not a neutral person to assist them, you know, yeah, yeah. uh, the people that they send is the people from the city council. So what the society thinks, oh, no, they, they, they are trying to post this on me because they want to do it. You know, and I'm here saying what I think, but they are gonna do it anyway. And what I'm saying is that it uh, it's just here. You know, I'm, I'm just saying it to like um, to how do you say when we just want to take something out of you? Mm -hmm. You know, so people go and just say what they think, but nothing happens then. So that's not a constructive dialogue as well. You know, having those spaces. It's good to summon people and to hear them, but if that is not going to lead to anything or people are not feeling okay, but I said that in the previous meeting, but that doesn't go. So what you're basically, yeah, what you're basically saying is that, yeah, that, that's the starting point. That's the starting point, getting them together. Yes, to get that, because they are doing take that. Take it from there, yes. yeah. Take it from there and then get, get them involved in the process and, the whole dialogue and the conversations and all that, that part of it. So that, I think, but where is the mindset issue? Where is it? Where, where is it? Where, where is it a problem in that? Why do people don't want people to have conversations with the, within the administration and all? I don't think they like conversations. The citizens, the society. Citizens wants it. So citizens, I'm sure, want it. But with, with the public officials and all, I think there is some fear of communication or there is some conversation issue that if we have conversations and then we are not able to do something, then it will be like, maybe we heard them out, but, and we understood them, but we couldn't do anything about it. Is it that? I don't yeah. know. What it is. Pro pro probably, 
probably that that is that could be one thing you know that yes we're going to hear them and or probably balance fairness you know yeah. okay uh, so i i listen to some people and they want this and should i listen to the other people and do what they also want to do and then I, i'm running a city and i have to see what's best for all and not for just the group and if you favor so it's a question yeah. of balance i think, I think you know it's not easy basic, of course. so for a moment what we should say that let those the administration and public officials be kept away from it mm-hmm. the people themselves create that whole structure around them where they themselves first have the conversations within themselves and then they come to a certain settlement within themselves and they tell the administration this is what you have to do i want to reach that stage <laughs> <laughs> because if oh. everyone has got together and done it no one can say no to them but because that divide and rule policy okay i'll listen to you here i'll listen to you there and then but i will do do you see that happening in somewhere in the world have you seen that no it doesn't happen because it's always <laughs> <laughs> but it needs to happen it needs to happen it, i mean look i, I don't know this, because i was saying oh my god bro this is happening but i but i this is I what we have to that. liliana this is but this is why we have to work on it because it's not happening and it is not something which can't happen it's just that people have to start at a small level maybe to show it as an experiment which is what the advantage of rafael is that you can show okay. it as a model okay. and if that model works it can then be taken everywhere because the concept works there i hope so that will that will be great yes or probably i don't know i'm not um that ambitious uh but uh, probably like in something at least you know try it in you know you'll feel, you'll feel so happy you'll feel you'll feel really happy when you see it happening in front of you like you know with with uh, something small to 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 get to the bigger part but yeah. there are a lot of things that i see good you know like a foundation that you can take off it's not like i'm saying there's nothing done you know i i i couldn't say that because uh besides not being true it's not fair as well because there Absolutely. are things that have been done you know and that they're okay the the thing is okay we have this foundation and take the good elements and try to improve them and also try to erase the the, the, good, the bad ones or the one, the ones that didn't work you know in the past or for this society in particular this doesn't work to identify that clearly so you do not repeat it in a different way because sometimes you know people repeat it but in a different way but it's the same so that's what i'm saying you know how to improve that and how to enhance people more and not just from the side from the the the, the part of just listening to them complaining because that is not a good dialogue of course what as the way i see it people at first are going to complain because that's what it's been like promoted in society and you know that social media has played a big role in that people just <laughs> insult and say what they think and because it's kind of you know nothing happens it's not uh you know exemption for that or something so that will happen first and you know that is like the starting point to having a constructive dialogue then but you have to build that citizenship um debate that for me has been it's not there you know you just summon them from this authority from the state so they come to your meeting you know and that's just a mm, power balance yep. issue and they come and there's no intermediate there no, no neutral person to assist to actually you know something good from all this venting that people do uh someone that can you know paraphrase that that can reframe that to something constructive to tell the other party and you know it goes both ways so that's what i'm saying needs to you know no, but i'm um, t- take it up look what you had one is the whole theoretical aspect of it one is you're sitting right there you have the experience on both sides you are a citizen and you've been part of the city council so take it as an experiment let's call it project rafaela get the best of the world <laughs> best of the people who've had all these kind of experiences let's get them together create a little we'll have a little conversation first and then if we can implement it there and it works there can you can imagine what kind of a model it will be for the world 
that yes the, the citizens have got involved and they are doing it can we reach a stage where we don't even need that kind of the way we look at administration or city councils maybe that whole concept can change why are we stuck with that structure it was a structure that was created at one point of time is it still relevant or not we can start questioning that also so let's start from the base the base are the people don't make me don't make me an anarchist <laughs> 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 why not why be, not i'm gonna be banished from my own city <laughs> now happy citizens will be with you they'll all be there <laughs> but i'm just I saying that not they... be able to walk through my own <laughs> so they'll be so happy when you walk there they'll say that's the person who changed <laughs> the whole concept of administration <laughs> in the world <laughs> <laughs> at least improve certain things you know no no don't um, think, no but think, don't think of improvement for the moment think of it as totally looking at relooking at it relooking at the way the whole concept of administration is done looking at technology that we have in our hands today look at that consider that consider the fact that we have we are not in a colony we are supposed to be a democracy let's look at that so the what is the mindset that needs to change there that also needs to go with it and then the fact of the conversations and dialogues which in general people have to start inculcating in their lives in general yeah. i mean that by itself is missing somewhere so that also has to come in so i think you've got the ideal place to do it can you imagine with only 100000 people that you have to work with can okay. i even think on a city like delhi can you imagine okay yeah you are seeing it from your perspective of course i understand the the the, the difference in yes. population uh but for me it's a, it's a it's a big city 25 25 million 25 million well, if i compare it to yours yes it's super small but uh it's, it's but to know why i'm giving it Why am I giving you the scale? Why I'm giving you the scale is so that you don't get overwhelmed with the whole concept. Yeah, okay, we yeah. only only have to no. deal with hundred. I just have to deal with hundred thousand. That's it. Now, and I agree with you that there's a lot that can be done here, and that's what I uh, stated in that uh, a lot has been already done, you know, and we can do more. Of course, there's always something more you can do, and I am I am. Uh, speaking from the mediation perspective that that is my point you know my focus exactly not i'm not trying to um uh, because there are other areas uh, that work uh, good that are that are okay you know that they have done a really good work yeah because the, look the thing is implementation of policies is something which definitely will still have to happen so that whole process will still have to be put into place so that's okay there there also what if there are issues where i mean where things can get better because of technology let other people look at that okay like we like you said this is concentrating on where mediation can fit into the process and how yes. people can be empowered exactly. in that sense so it's only that yes. definitely exactly. lots of other activities have to happen but yes. what but okay. what is happening i want to make that clear thank but you but what <laughs> how what was your interaction with all our jams fellows and that discussion did that reach oh. anywhere Yes, well I'm I'm trying to come up with my my plan, my plan of, on on what to pursue uh, in the US. I I have it clear actually, you know, I I have I've been talking about it just now. I'm not going to repeat myself. Yeah. It's boring. <laughs> um but it's about, you know, this uh implementing all this uh mechanisms or, you know, um uh there's a word in my head in spanish uh but this uh, sort of um um spaces you know where people can um dialogue and have uh, have that chance to to solve their conflicts uh within with the the city council with their neighbors um and that the city council can actually uh you know be intervene as as uh, uh as a helpful third uh, party you know not in the conflict that is that is with the city council uh but have a, a sort of mechanism that can um solve that conflict you know not just the people can come make a complaint and have a file and that file goes around and it takes to nowhere exactly. people get frustrated the the employees as well get frustrated you know the, the public administration it is is has people in it <laughs> you know because that is the other aspect that i'm concerned 
the employees are also individuals and they have got lost in all the paperwork and they you know uh because of many many reasons that i'm not going to point out now but they have you know this mindset uh, that that is uh, rooted in, in all these things that are not working properly you know because you get very frustrated if you don't do not get to help people actually not solving their conflict you know Absolutely. and they come once every day because there are people that come you know every single day just to complain at your face and tell you how annoyed they are how angry they are and you know people working there as, are also individuals and where are they you know the employees in all the process as well so that is something how do you deal how do you address all the the, the conflicts as well with the employees that's something that in that area, I can assure you and tell you, nothing has been done. Okay. And you know, it's not the the, the the top priority. You know, and I'm and I'm, I'm not trying to offend anyone. I'm not being mean. I'm I'm being uh, super honest about it. In terms of citizens, yes, there are a lot of things that they are trying, you know, to improve and stuff. In terms of processes, efficiency, but now not the individual and the conflict. No, and I'm not. I'm not sure if I make any sense here, but, but I'm the, trying. But on the employee so, level, what are, what are you planning on the employee level? What what needs to be done there? What are you? Well, I I have proposed to have certain. I, I one of my 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 uh, propositions. Is that good? Is that correct? Yeah. Um. But but they say no. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I I wasn't successful. Um, was to have, you know, every week, uh, a weekly um, gathering, you know, between the employees to listen to the actual situation, you know, in terms of uh, what they are experiencing um, with the people and with the processes. And mostly due to COVID, you know, because that was a very stressful time for everyone. And um no it, it my idea didn't got um got popular uh so we couldn't done that but the only the one thing that i that i could uh do was um because it was uh other office not not mine called me to ask me you know i i, I was um a legal advisor for a, 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 an office so another office called me to ask me about the norms, the, the regulations in terms of all these processes that I was telling you about the, the entrepreneur thing. Um, because they needed to enhance that because they, are, they weren't working properly. So they needed to enhance it. So I said, okay, we should call all the technicians, all of the head of each of the uh, millions of offices <laughs> that we have and we have to listen to them because they are the ones that can tell us what of this regulation is working and what is not what is it needs to be updated you know because this norm is from 1986 and we are in <laughs> you know so uh we need to update that or probably the requirements that we had in 1986 are now the ones that we need right now so we need to listen to them what they are actually experiences in the daily processes and what they need so we we have to listen to them you know they call me as a legal advisor to change the the to make a draft of a new bill i can't do that if i don't listen to the no. that's my point of view i can't i i couldn't do that if i I had to have the feedback from the people that is working with these regulations and they need to tell me what is actually working, what is not. And then I can do an evaluation from the legal aspect and say, okay, this is something that, you know, uh, it, it is within the legal framework. This, we cannot do it because it's illegal or something, or we, we can't because this regulation says we cannot, or what it needs to be changed, you know? So that's one thing I could do. We gather with all the people that is involved in all these processes. And they told me, you know, we go, we went 
um, one by one the, the regulations that they apply in the daily processes. And we made a draft of a proposition to change all that. Then I left, so I don't know <laughs> if that report got uh, anywhere, but uh, that was the idea. Yeah. Yeah, the important thing is that the right people have to be involved in that. Oh, yeah. and I'm yeah. sorry. And they felt, uh, they were so grateful that they had that chance to say what they think about the current processes and about the current regulations. That was, you know, and I, I'm an employee as well. I, I'm not a public, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how you say it. I'm not a politician or anything. So for me, it was a great place as well to talk with my peers and to reflect and debate because as well as a legal advisor, I just, you know, apply by the law, abide by the law. And sometimes it's, uh, that law is not updated and you're saying okay. something to the citizen that is completely uh, in, you know, not accurate, but you have to because that's the current law. Oh, Liliana, the question that comes out, the serious question that comes out from that is, why are you not a politician? Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> why is the question? No is not the answer. Uh, oh, uh, I don't know how to answer that. I you don't have know. to answer that. No, it's an important I, one. I'm telling you, it's very important. I will. I, I, yeah. I never saw myself as a politician. I I I saw myself as a as a as a technician. You know, as um, I like that. I like to make my contribution from 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 that uh, perspective. You know, I, I I like doing these things, and I'm telling you right now, I was very happy when you know I could. Um, I had the opportunity to gather with these people. We had a few uh, meetings and then I write a whole report. And of course we did that. That's, that's what I want to say. We did that in our stolen time from work because our office, it wasn't, was not a priority. So we didn't have, you know, okay, yeah, go and gather and talk about this. And I, I, I think my contribution is, is from that, from that part. And that's what I, you think. I'm not sure look, about look, the what, contribution from being a politician. No, I tell you why. Because what you're looking at is the current situation as to this is what a politician does, this is what a politician is like, so I'm not that. Just take that image out of your head. Look at yourself. All those things that you are thinking of are things what a politician should be doing. That's exactly what they should, be do, should have been doing. But they're not. So let's not think that that is the example. You are the example. So why can't you be a politician? Well, I will think about it and we'll get back to you <laughs> in the no, future. <laughs> no, why I'm saying so is because, look, the good people who want to do good things in society, for the, for what reason do they stay away from being politicians? I just want to understand that. this And this seems to be a, a global issue. A global situation is not something new to you. The good people don't get into it. Uh, I don't know. I think that's another debate. I'm, I'm not sure I want to get into it. <laughs> but um, the thing is, I feel that um, who I am is uh, best, um, um, uh, how do you say, it's best shown in, in a, that other role, you know, in life. Because I, I, was, I actually feel that the, uh, the role of a politician is just that having those conversations, getting the right people on the table, understanding what the situation is, what they, what they look at, balancing things out, and then, say, okay, in the, to the extent of them not being mediators, to the extent that they can, they will actually take the decision. Okay, they'll take the decision. Probably but, I fear that if I'm a politician, I won't be able to do that, you know. Why? Probably. I'm saying it. I'm just thinking out loud because you just asked me this. <laughs> but I, 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 no, I don't know because I probably uh, see that they are involved in other activities and they talk to people, of course, but not in the way that probably, you know, I'm saying it right now, like having this, this conversations with my peers, it, it was not, it was something super constructive, you know, we, we were super happy, even though that we knew that probably that report <laughs> will not go anywhere. But we were happy that we had that, that, that space for, for us to, to reflect on work, on our work, on our daily tasks, you know, we take it seriously. And um, we wanted to make it better because what 
uh, probably people don't know that a lot of uh, public employees wants to work better. You yeah, know, yeah. wants Absolutely. to work uh, actually great for them. They do not want to listen to people, insult them, you know, or, and I'm not blaming people, you know, it's a whole vicious circle. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And I'm not blaming and pointing fingers at anyone. Yeah, yeah. It's an ecosystem. Uh, and everything is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, but um, that's what I feel, you know, probably it's not the same role. Probably I'm seeing it. Uh, in the wrong way. I never, I never actually uh, consider. I've been asked, but I never considered. No, no, no. What is the? I, I always, it, it always say no. It always was no. <laughs> Okay, so maybe you'll have to start relook it because the thing is that the kind of things that you want to do can happen both two, two ways. One is right at the grassroots level when you start making the change there, when you are helping people getting together and whatever, having conversations and constructive dialogue and all that. On the other end is on the other on the other spectrum on the on the people who actually make the decisions for them to actually get people involved in conversations. So there are two places where this can happen. So I'm saying, look at, consider both of them. Do work at both levels. I find it's all because finally it's all about getting people to have conversations. That's all it's about. And once that's processed, I, starts, I can promise that 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 is what I can promise. I I I, I will think about. It. <laughs> good, good. So, but then, but how was your interaction with uh, the? I mean, you had uh, met Adi. Adi was oh. was was able to give you some guidance on certain things. Yes. Yes, he was great. He was great. He clarified a lot of um, concerns and inquiries that I had. So it was a great conversation with him. And he advised me on what to pursue in the States. Yes, it was, it was great hearing from other JAMS fellow. I, I didn't know about the JAMS fellowship. So it was... Um, how, did, how did you great. get to know? How did you get to know about the JAMS fellowship? From you. Yeah, yeah. See, that, that, that's not coming out. Okay, you told me. I mean, look, it's from not... you, from you, you told me. You told good, me about the Trump fellowship. Yeah, and I, I'm, I thank you for that because I, I had no idea that existed. So that exists, and um, it was great that um, now you have that show where Jams fellows are, you know, blaming. Uh, what is it about and what you can do and you know that you can apply and things so that was that was great and then listen to the judge uh, Shimak uh, oh, it was up. great yes as well all his experience as well as Tat mm -hmm. um, they had wonderful experiences and they make you you know um, uh, they motivate to do it so that's that's well, the good. great thing Good part is that they're wonderful people. I mean, they really want to help. They just you you met them. I mean you you could see from them. Yes, they yes, just want yes. to help. They just it's just nice. They're people. very generous. They're very yeah. generous to share their experience uh, and to that, that willingness to help. You know someone that is which is yeah. Them. Which is why I had put that out. I wanted to do that show separately. Wanted to put that out just to show that look, all if all these people are very helpful. You should get in touch with them. Have again the ideas, conversations. Have those conversations about what you think. There are people there to guide you. They've been out there because still, whatever you might say, there is still it's not such a big world. It's not such a big. There is, of course, in the sense of this whole formal structure of mediation world that has been created. There's, I mean, a few nice people there i'm sure there are lots of nice people but the few that i know i want them to connect with other people and they talk to them about what their experiences and just those nice conversations what am yeah. i what, what are we doing right this nice conversation that we're having this is what it's all about just getting nice people to have nice conversations and good things will come out of that uh, i'm i'm i i think um i'm not sure uh i hope the people are enjoying it we are uh, i don't know about the time what do you think we are supposed to enjoy it. That's the whole idea. People, <laughs> I'm even saying people don't watch it. I'm okay with that. This conversation, <laughs> I should enjoy the conversation. That's all it's about. And I, I, and I notice that people do. I mean, they, with the feedback that I get, yes. But still, what we were looking at was that, look, the number of people who watch these videos, they're not such huge numbers. Only because people don't share. It's back to the same thing. It's just that these things are not out there. And there is a lot of, of course, in my case, a lot of content which goes out. So that content, which is new content, which keeps coming up, how will people get to know about it? 
it's just a matter of get them getting used to the fact that look, there is a YouTube channel, you subscribe to it and the notifications, you'll get to know when some new video comes in or someone goes live. But I think first of all, getting to people to communicate to them that these things are out there. Look, there are so many people on this planet. You know, it's just, there are certain people who would like to hear these conversations. How do we just have to get to them? That's what it's all about. Getting to them. How do we do that, Liliana, if you tell me? Any other? How do we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay no pressure, no um, pressure. <laughs> um okay uh, let me think about it we, we cover we cover the advertisement advertising uh thing probably um i have no idea okay tell, no. Me, tell me one thing tell me the out of the bloom like that I don't supposing know supposing that. supposing I, I say that can we you share these things on whatsapp suppose you send out some messages on whatsapp saying say lecture series Lecture number one by Ken Cloak. If you send it by I, WhatsApp. Okay, I have an idea, but you're not going to like it because I already told you this. You should make short clips. <laughs> but then you'll have to do Shorter. that. You'll have to do that. You know how many how many hours of videos I have to start watching all of them and making clips. That'll be the, the next year of my life will only be spent on that. So okay, you, but you know, on WhatsApp, you, you have to... Uh, send that will be a good okay no, but we are in the same uh, we are talking all about the same thing which is advertising promote promotion you know i have no other idea more than that but you know uh, if you want to send something to uh, from whatsapp or tiktok you know it should be uh, no, i tell you what no i tell you what I, we have to decide I, what what is the concept one i've been saying identifying those with the mediator mindset mm -hmm. these people are all out there and they already have the natural ability. We just have to tell them that this is something which is done on a formal basis also. It's not just that you're sitting with some friends and you're helping them resolve a dispute. You have mm -hmm. it going. You, it's the same concept, but it can actually be a profession at some point. But the problem again is that on the other side, which I don't know whether you saw with, with Michael Lang, that last lecture. Yes, uh, that, the, 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 the lecture. Week. Yeah, yes, I, I, I saw parts. Uh, it was very interesting uh, with um, what's, yeah, the, what's the name of the... Zofnat. 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 I, I don't want to pronounce it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't want to pronounce Z it badly. Z you can say Zo. Okay. It's, Zofnat. It's not, it's not fair for the person. As okay. I'm no, but what I, say, I was mentioning there to Michael also that the fact is that here I keep saying identifying those with the mediator mindset. Damn good. We can do that. But then after that, if they are going to get frustrated because work doesn't happen, then maybe we're not doing, I'm not doing a good service. I'm doing disservice to them. Someone who did not know about this suddenly gets activated. And once you get activated and you, this is what you want to do, you would not want to do anything else. So then that whole, mm -hmm. it's like you, you, I mean, you really have the passion, you have everything. So now you're exploring opportunities outside your workspace so you can create something for yourself there and sustain it. So similarly, yeah. everyone will have to start looking at that. But if there are those opportunities being created so first, do you create opportunities or do you identify those with the mediator mindset? That by itself, I have to look at what needs to be done because creating opportunities and not having the right people, that also goes against the concept. Because I've been saying user experience, the user experience has to be damn good because only then will the word spread. But if you do not have the right people doing it, the user experience won't be good. And if that doesn't happen, definitely the whole concept goes which is what I was digging deeper into the US situation also and trying to understand that the way it's gone there, I don't see it happening the way it should have happened. If the user experience in the last 40, 45 years was damn good, there was no way that people would not be going to mediators first. Why would lawyers take control of the entire mediation? So there is some fundamental issue there. So I think this balancing out issue is that you have to tell me what, how should I go about it? Okay. Or we go about it. Why I, we go about it, yes. <laughs> Can I think about it and, and, and get back to you? I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to say something interesting right now about that. Because I just feel that there is something which, I mean, like promoting a concept, damn good. One is, I look, you're saying to go into the user. So you have small clips, like you're saying, TikTok or whatever, small clips. Yeah, that, that's actually getting the interest good. going on, on the, the mediation. The world. Yeah, but the point is that if you go out, create a demand for mediation and you don't have the right people doing it, there is no, I don't think it's it's not it's not a good thing then for me that's a good issue I told you I, there was one video I made I, I, I made a video with someone I'd done a mediation with and I said let's put a video out I made the video 
and i put it on social media in the next i think or maybe a, a couple of hours only i took it down because i realized that this is going to push the concept everyone wants to okay wants to go into do mediation but the demand that gets created where are those people those people also have to be there the right people have to do it we are at the stage at least in our country where what we call what we calling private so what, mediation what are you asking asking me that how do you go about balancing these three things one is the user <laughs> identify getting to the user the other is identifying the person with the mediator mindset three creating opportunities for the people with the mediator mindset how do you create it's a whole thing going together one and doing one not the other is also an issue so how do you do it on a balanced level interesting question <laughs> i'm not sure i have the answer um just a thought just a thought i mean just what would come to your mind like that because once you start thinking too much about something sometimes that yeah. my nice basic thought which might be the best thought in the world gets lost so without okay. thinking what comes to your mind well i told you i think you should go to youth you know mm-hmm. when i said tiktok i was implied for me that you go to youth i'm sorry probably i offend people that are using tiktok <laughs> <laughs> it was not my intention i'm saying that that is like the platform for uh, younger people today So I think if you want to identify in the in the way you you are seeing things, you know that there are people that have that mindset, not necessarily, uh, you know, a mediator or a professional mediator. Probably they will pursue it after. But you have to go to the younger generations, and you have to st- start changing the ways things are there. And they have the flexibility and the openness, you know. that young people have and they will get it you know and they will actually as well debate and you know ask and so i think there is a start you know actually for me the way to go is with uh kids um and and young people you know you have to start there to make a long you know to make it change society change you know that uh, since the foundation you understand i'm not saying that it's n- that it's impossible to change the mindset of uh, community of older people you know of, of adults um but uh, it's a bit harder and it, it will take time you know so if you want to see a change okay it's the, the, the change is from generations so you have to start there that's what i'm thinking because i was telling that's, you look uh, that's what i'm thinking with no pressure was no where it was no but the vibe is the best look, i can say no the thing with the kids is that there is of course this whole discussion on peer mediation which takes place my yeah, only thing yeah there's a lot being done with the kids but my uh, concept there was that get that atmosphere created where these kids actually get down to resolving disputes mm-hmm. not the larger training on conflict management that's a okay. different area i'm trying to divide the two i've been trying to i've been putting it all across wherever i go i try to say that yeah. because kids have to learn that this is something they can use to resolve their disputes they actually start doing it so then that culture develops that culture of mediation that i talk about is actually doing it as in actually resolving a dispute so you're empowered enough to actually resolve the dispute yourself rather than saying that oh it's a good thing that everyone should resolve their disputes within themselves that's a larger statement yes the practical aspect to fit once you do it yourself and you actually utilize that whole thing that by itself then will always stay in your mind because you feel this is the way you should do it so that getting the kids to do that i'm more interested that they should actually do that and rather than the larger discussion on the fact that yes collaborative dispute resolution and well but you agree that you should start there yeah yeah absolutely um, absolutely that is a starting point i mean no, absolutely I totally agree with the, you the that mind, the mindset should be should start when you're young you know this is what i'm trying to do what i do is i got to show you that one that i that those little kids in africa the school that i went yes, to yes i want to great. find that i want to find that i actually want to put it up here to show you that actually that communication out of that communication one kid actually said i want to be a mediator 
so that's all it is all about that first that's communication awesome. that they can talk about it so i think that is absolutely the space to start but the thing is it has to be done on scale for me it has to be done on scale the thing is if what communication goes out to them which is simple one little clip small clip can actually tell them what it's all about which is not much what is there to tell people about yeah for them it it should be all uh, you know quick and uh, yes they they should in haste like immediately you know i, I told you there is a story it got their attention but there is a story in my mind on this which i want to put it on only thing is that creating an animation obviously of those requires large resources to create a proper animation so i thought maybe do it with sketches or something like that so let's see i'd develop something there but i really want that story to be out there and then kids to identify with the characters from that story and take it mm-hmm. from there so okay, let me yeah. sh- let me show you let me put that up so okay. that i want to have taken that that <laughs> newsletter that i got from there let me just share that here on screen so anyone watches yeah, it because yeah. I, i i was actually wanting to put it up on a, in a post but i just felt that it was so nice of them to put it out yes and actually they they did that and 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 send it at the straight i like i like what tadana said i want to try to become like a mediator i feel good about media that's not only voting for a person they vote for it okay this is picked up the word voting that's okay but i'm just saying that we have if you have these conversations with these kids well but but she she got the, the yeah she got the concept the idea yes you so know, i'm just saying that these everyone. are the things if you can have these conversations with these people i think all of us should take out time and just have whatever it could be a school around your area whatever okay let me just come and have a call. okay it's not at scale in that sense but i'm saying record it if the if the if the parents of the kids give you permission to record it don't record otherwise please do not no, no. <laughs> but no, if no, they no. give you permission to record it that one can one conversation then can be shared wherever you I mean, this, that, that's what i'm saying these small clips on that one communication with yeah. one kid yeah. one ch- child talks to you about some aspect that they well, want that, to understand that's... but i think it's it's um, a good idea it's and it's important to hear yeah. from from the kids yes yeah. how they and, see things you know they always have like a an interesting perspective to exactly know, this the teacher who who would organize this is i actually wrote to i said i want to have a conversation with tadana she has a lot to teach me about conflict resolution they know <laughs> everything i'm telling you they know everything they just have to you just have to ask them and they'll tell you it'll be in such basic simple words which is actually very useful rather than the complex theories and everything no it's all down to very simple things and those simple things are what we need we don't well, need probably that. probably that's your answer about balancing yes. all these things yes. that you are yeah. looking for yeah but i'm just saying the look i've been trying to say that look i can't have all these conversations all i said was I, mm-hmm. if a thousand thousand of these people if i can get together all of you thousand of thousand of you they don't know they're not thousands of you <laughs> you, are, <laughs> you are unique by yourself i'm just saying thousand mm-hmm. people they reach out to a thousand if you have heard me say this i'm sure so many times but i'm still going to say it a thousand reach out to a thousand you have a million people out there with a the mediator mindset available you you are you are um you are uh, referring to what can we um uh, you know and this is the word probably uh how you can spread like like it can contagious you know yes, exactly. how you can <laughs> yeah that that mindset of mediation no, but it's did what it's not it's about it, yeah but it's not happening in that way the way i thought it would i mean some months back when i had started looking at it from this perspective that let's get these people together and we they, they reach out to other people so it, that's why it's not an institution it is individuals out there and i tried to explain the benefit of it also i said look you reach out you have those i'm saying a thousand this is not a thousand that has to be done in six months a thousand can be done in two years it's not an issue i mean that's the, like i'm just keeping it as a target because sounds nice 1000 to 1000 sound just sounds nice it doesn't matter you can start with one also i'm not that is not an issue but the fact is that you have these people who are out there but they are not into the fold of what we call the formal mediation but they're out there they have the natural ability so you are mm-hmm. getting them involved in the concept and this whole peacemakers thing that i was trying to develop was that these people who are part of communities are, will be your people to go out talk to people about mediation you will support them 
So if they have, there's a meeting to be done and they want to understand, the community wants to understand a little more, they'll organize that meeting and you come in only for that meeting and explain. So you're in, in a way, they're support, support mediator. And the other end, you are identifying those with the mediator mindset within communities. So now this peacemaker is matchmaking between mediators who are in that community, who have the mindset and have been identified, which you would help identifying and putting them together. So there are mm -hmm. mediations happening which you are not involved in. They're doing it at that level. But then th th those certain mediations which come in which your expertise is required. So because Liliana has been supporting them, they, no, let's go to Liliana for this. So you get work also. So it's not that you're doing it as charity. It is creating a whole network with you, with, within you, which caters for your work also. It helps in identifying those with the mediator mindset also. You have the peacemaker who is promoting mediation actually coordinating the mediation also so you have a whole it's a little ecosystem there which is what i wanted to, to develop yeah. so of course we have these online platforms which are doing that but i'm saying this is such a person to person kind of a, a profession and the whole concept of a dispute there is a certain person there okay liliana said this said let's talk to liliana about it so at least that there's an individual it's not a platform it's not so, so and so.com let's go there no, that peacemaker is an individual as part of the community. Okay, let's just talk to the person. Let's just find out. So I'm saying that that's kind of a nice little group of people get developed there. So that's why I said this thousand, if they develop those thousand and then reach out to, okay, okay, one mediator, person with a mediator mindset caters to even a thousand people. So you just do the maths of it and you realize that we can cover a lot of people like that. But the starting point is, getting people to just reach out and understand the larger picture in it because they think that, oh, what is it? It's just some, what, are we just doing good work for whatever? No, you're not just doing good work. You're doing good for your work for yourself. You're promoting yourself. You are going to get work from that community. So that is what you're creating. It's like a, on your own little <laughs> a group of consumers, as you call it, for products. <laughs> These are people who identify with you. So I was looking at it from that perspective. What do you think? How do you look at it? No, no, I, 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 I think you have an interesting idea. Um, and it should be tried out, you know, as you were saying before, like an experience, uh, experiment. So yeah, yeah there, there's something that it worth trying, you know. Um, so you, will, you will never know if you don't try it. You're going to do this? Uh, okay, sorry. so no pressure again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll talk. We'll talk about it. We'll talk Perfect. about it. Okay, so as I see him from this, at this point of time, you feel that we should be ending this conversation yes, because think you think so. yes. because you think that these conversations should not be too long on the YouTube yes. channel so that people yes. not watch it. So whatever. So anything. <laughs> so although this is a conversation, but anything specific that you want to generally end with, anything that you want to on a nice positive note that you want to end in oh um well i i thanking you for inviting me and for asking me questions and for um wanting to hear my thoughts about it um about mediation and uh what i can say is that i'm very happy to uh, be a part of this community of mediators around the world that we share uh, the same, um, you know, thoughts for the, the good for communities, for the world. And that, um, you know, I hope ev everyone's heart is always in the right place so we can keep working towards this. And uh, I hope we can spread this, this mindset, this way of seeing uh, things uh, among you know in it's just it's not like in um you have to do a lot you have to start in your daily life and that is a challenge for it's not like for me as a mediator it's not like i'm done you know i have it all covered and all results so uh, for me it is a challenge itself and uh, and it's good challenge and i and, and i see it so um you know fulfilling so i i hope that we can you know having our hearts in the right place always and from that on we can spread mediation uh, 
around us. So thank you so much. Well, that's what I like about you. You have the, your heart at the right place. You've got the best of intentions, beautiful thoughts, beautiful mind. Lots, lots of things you have to do for this world and you have to do that. So the light that the world needs, this is, this is what you are. So please, you, I mean, looking at you to do lots, lots, lots. So thank you very much, Liliana. Of course, oh, we are going no. to continue our conversation. Thank so th thank you. So thank